Before I start the video, I just want to make a quick announcement. One of my clips from my real fanning videos may be featured on PensyFan 19's channel. He's another real faner who also makes similar content towards me and well, more content than I do. But I recommend checking his channel out and well, his video whenever he releases it. Anyway, back to the video. The stockyard seems to be doing pretty well. Indubitably, but how are we going to get all that meat out since there's so much? The answer is simple. We built railroad. Hello my fellow rail fans. It's the Chicago Rail Fan here. And welcome back to a long delayed episode of the Chicago Abandoned Railroad. This series will showcase the stations and rail lines that no longer exist. Keep in mind that some of these locations are not 100% accurate, and the information about them are from sources linked in the description down below. For now, we will conclude the south side elevated with the stockyard branches, branches, one of which was named the Kenwood branch for the neighborhood of Kenwood, the other being named the stockyard branch for the stockyards which were a bunch of meat packing plants located in the Conchtable area where workers would put meat there. While service started in 1907 from the L, the branch was created back in 1864 where the Union Stockyard and Transit Company was chartered to build a rail network that would serve the Chicago stockyards and connect to the nearby railways. The Kenwood line specifically was built to link the stockyard with the then Illinois Central Tracks. The lines were used for freight traffic and for some passenger service in the late 1880s and 90s to the Chicago LaSalle Street Station via these tracks here. And service went to as far as Riverdale on the Illinois Central Line via these tracks. The trains also stopped at the Indiana South Side Elevated stop for passengers to transfer onto the South Side Elevated. The railroads that operated on the line merged into the Chicago Junction Railway in 1898. But it didn't really last long as in 1904, the Chicago Junction Railway stopped passenger service on the 40th Street line, which was basically this whole line here. Except from the stockyards to LaSalle Street Station that ended for some reason in 1908. At the same time, the Chicago Junction Railway was ending its passenger service. Chicago City Council passed an ordinance that required the great separation of the 40th Street Line. In March of 1903, the Chicago Junction Railroad, not to be confused with Chicago Junction Railway, would be responsible for this. And in September of that year, they signed a 50-year lease with the South Side Elevated for the 40th Street Line, where the L would take over passenger service on, on the lines. The Chicago Junction Railway would still operate freight trains near here, though. There was a clause in the agreement where if the elevated company paying rent failed to do so for six months, the Chicago Junction Railway would have the right to seize the tracks and operate the line themselves. L service on the branches didn't start until 1907 due to construction going on in the area. The Kenwood branch had three tracks. The northern track was for the Chicago Junction Railway freight operation and the two southern tracks were for the south side elevated and were electrified via third rail. Here's how the track setup would have been like for the Kenwood branch. This is a photograph of the Cottage Grove Drexel station, which now the area is just home to some apartment development around the area. Um, you can see that the northern track here it was used for the Chicago Junction Railroad freight operations, and these two southern tracks here were used for the elevated company that operated here, which I believe was the Chicago Elevated Railroad, or CTA, depending on what time this is. You can also tell that there's a third rail on these tracks as well. There were five stops on the Kenwood branch, and seven on the Stockyard. The Stockyard branch also had a unique characteristic where it would loop around in a counterclockwise direction, returning back to Indiana or wherever the trains would go. Here you can see where the uh, the tracks from the Stockyard Branch would split and go into the Packingtown Loop, which was the name for the loop of the Stockyard Branch. 
to the west of these tracks would have likely been the Racine Station, which at the time was named Moore Street, and then just south of here would have been the Armor Station. Making it the second loop in Chicago's L system. Well, the second loop to ever existed. And this one, by the way, was is, is smaller than the, than the Union Loop. As for service to the two branches, it was mostly shuttle service to and from the main station here, which was Indiana. However, the Kenwood branch would see some service to and from the Loop, from Howard, and even Ravenswood. As for the Stockyard branches, they mostly saw service to and from Kenwood here, where workers can easily live within Kenwood, and then just commute here. There was even development around the area specifically built for for workers to, to commute to and from here. The Stockyard Ranch also saw some service south on the south side elevated main line to 61st Street. However, the Stockyard Ranch would be victim to three fires. One happened in 1910 and another happened in 1934. The second one being caused by a smoker who let a cigarette start a hay fire. Speaking of starting hay fires, I wonder if that guy was had a connection to Catherine O'Leary. Here are some of the results of the 1934 fire that affected the Chicago Stockyard branch around here. You can tell that some of the tracks here had gotten destroyed and some of the elevated structure got damaged. Regardless, the second fire caused more damage and service west of Halstead didn't resume until 1935. To make matters worse, the stockyards were on the decline since their peak in 1924. It also didn't help that the Great Depression happened five years later. After the third fire happened in August of 1956, which caused the loop around here to be split into two branches due to damage from the Packer Station and also the elevated structure around the area. Most of the meat companies have moved out around this time, even before then. Wallace was closed in 1954 due to extremely low ridership. Surprisingly, CTA had decided to restore the section around Packers, but that wouldn't last long as the 50-year lease had come to an end. And with the CTA running into conflict with the Chicago Junction Railroad about payments to improve the now deteriorated trackage, Service to both the Kenwood branch and the Stockyard branch had stopped in 1957, October for the Stockyard branch and November for the Kenwood. The 40th Street line would still be used for the Chicago Junction Railroad for freight operations, and the segment saw some ownership change during the 70s and 80s from Penn Central, Conrail, and even CSX. The Kenwood branch can still be seen today as it's mostly intact. However, since the Stockyard Branch was built on steel elevated structures exclusive for passenger service, it, most of it was removed and the branch was replaced with bus service by the CTA. As for the Stockyards, the area is now home to an industrial park, where small factories still operate there, although none of which involve meatpacking. And with that, we've arrived at the end of the video and the Southside Elevated miniseries. And if you thought this was a lot, wait till the next miniseries, where we talk about another elevated company that was way more ambitious than the Southside Elevated. And for this, we'll be heading west. Before you disembark, please pay the fare, which is liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Until my next video, this is the Chicago Rail Fan, departing and signing out.